Okay, welcome to video one of section 8.2. This is factoring with the greatest common factor, GCF. So essentially, we're factoring polynomials with monomials. So we're not going the full step for the entire uh, homework, but this is the first part of the homework that you will be doing tonight. So to start out with, we have a few steps that we have to go through, and we're going to go through them slowly with this problem. We have 4x squared minus 3x. Step one for factoring um, with monomials, factoring with the GCF, is to first find the GCF of the term. So we need to find the greatest common factor of this term and this term. So I do suggest we rewrite this as 4x squared plus a negative 3x. And that's simply because then we can see that 3 as being negative and it's we don't have a we don't have to worry about that negative it's attached to something right now and it's attached to a number which is kind of nice so if we look at 4x squared and we're looking at the prime factorization of that we got 2 times 2 times x times x and if we look at the prime factorization of negative 3 x we got negative 1 times 3 times x so the only thing that is the same between the two of them is a single x so our greatest common factor of 4x squared and negative 3x is x. That is common in both terms. There is an x in both terms and nothing else. Our next step, we need to write those terms as products of the greatest common factor. So we have our original equation of 4x squared minus 3x, or we can rewrite that as 4x squared plus a negative 3 x and we now need to write this in terms of our greatest common factor so I'm going to give myself a little bit more space and we can write 4x squared if we were supposed to write that in terms of having an x there our greatest common factor then we can say well if I have an x here how do I make 4x squared turn into 4x squared with just an x well I need to multiply it by 4x as well I need to look at this negative 3x or plus a negative 3x and I have a negative 3 here and I'm going to just add my x to the greatest common factor so I almost had that one done on that side. Our next step we need to essentially take that distributive property that we've learned for the last few weeks actually not for the last few weeks the last few months we've been doing it since the beginning we have to take the distributive property and sort of reverse it. So we have 4x times x plus a negative 3 times x. And we're going to reverse distribute this. So we're going to take it out. And if we take it out, we're taking it out and putting it out in front. So that x is going to be out in front. And this x is multiplying the 4x. And it also multiplies this negative 3. So we have x times 4x plus a negative 3. Now let's check. I know you're probably thinking, okay, she just did witchcraft. What's the purpose of this? I don't get it. So we have all this. Let's actually check our work. Essentially, what we should be getting if we actually do this math, x times 4x plus a negative 3, if we actually do this work and actually do the distributive property here, we should result in having our original equation. So if I have x times 4x, I end up getting 4x squared. And if I have x times a negative 3, we get plus a negative 3x, which we can also rewrite as saying 4x squared minus 3x. And that is our original equation. So here is our final answer, the x times 4x plus a negative 3. And this is us checking our work. So we've just checked our work. That's kind of nice. Now let's go on and let's try this with a problem that's a little more difficult. So I'm going to zoom out a little ways so I can find this other problem. Here we go. Here is our new problem. We have six, negative 16 times x to the third minus 8x squared minus 12x. I'm going to rewrite every single one of these negatives or subtraction signs as plus a negative. 
plus a negative. That way that negative sign is attached to a number and is not a subtraction sign anymore because the subtraction kind of makes things a little more difficult. So now, first step, we need to find the GCF of these factors. So we have negative 16 x to the third. We can write that out as negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x times x. Lots of 2's and x's. Let's look at negative 8x squared. We can write that as negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x. And look and see how I'm lining everything up. And then last one we have negative 12x. Got a negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 3, technically, and I didn't save any space for 3, so I'm just going to put a 3 over here, because I know there's no 3 in the other two numbers, so I'm just going to put it on the end, and that's not going to hurt anything. And we have times an x. So now let's find the overlap here. We have an overlap of negative 1s, an overlap of 2s, another overlap of 2s, and an overlap of x's in all 3. So we got negative 1 times 2 times 2 times x. So that means negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 times another 2 is negative 4. x is our GCF. So that's our GCF. Awesome. Found our GCF. That's our greatest common factor. So now we need to write this in term, this original equation in terms of that GCF. So I'm going to rewrite this down here so I have more space and I can see it if I move up. Plus a negative 8x squared plus a negative 12 x. So now I'm going to write each of these numbers in terms of our GCF. So this GCF is going to dictate how I'm writing each of these numbers. If I start out with a negative 4x for this 16 right here, if I did take a negative 4 out of 16, I end up with just a positive 4. If I take an x out of x to the third, I'm taking out an x squared. And remember, when I say take out as of right now, I'm talking division here. Division. I'm not talking subtraction anymore. That take out is no longer subtraction in, these world, er, in this world. So I'm going to do a negative 4x again. And I have the numbers negative 8x squared. So if I take a negative 4 away from the 8, we got a 2. And if I take an x out, I have simply an x remaining. Same last little thing. I have um, negative 12x. So I'm going to write a negative 4x. If I take negative 4x out of that baby, I end up having just simply a 3 left over. So now reverse distributive property, and I don't have a lot of space on top, so I'm going to show my distributive property right here on the bottom. So I'm taking that out and putting it out in front, and everything that is remaining is going to come into this side equation. this equation right next to it. So there is my final answer. We can check our work by actually distributing this in to each one of these numbers. However, I'm not going to do it right now just for the sake of time. So I hope this helps. Keep working at this. If you have any questions, please email me or, ask, or, or put a comment on the YouTube link and I will try to answer it as soon as possible. Thank you.